and Fiona here. So I apologize about the glare on my glasses, but I want to wear these glasses so everyone's just gonna have to suffer. I was watching a lot of these videos on YouTube recently and it was like, um, stupid things I've done in cosplay. And I just kept clicking and clicking and clicking and I was like, these are so entertaining. And I was like, man, have I done some stupid things in cosplay? So I was like, why don't I make a video like that? So here I am today with stupid things I've done in cosplay. Uh, these aren't really things kind of like I ran in front of 12 cars or I jumped off of a bridge. It's more like things regarding myself, kind of like I did this and it was really stupid or like, I mean, I guess jumping in front of cars would be stupid as well, but it's more like personal stuff. So, I have my little listy listy here, and here are some stupid things I've done in cosplay. So, my first story, and I'm sure some of you may already know this from my share channel, because I did talk about this on my share channel once a while ago, but I need to talk about it again because it is easily one of, if not the stupidest thing I've done in cosplay. So, one year at Anime North, which is uh, one of the largest conventions in the GTA in Canada, I was like, you know what? I'm going to cosplay uh, Stocking from Panty and Stocking and I was doing her transformation outfit so it was, um, I'll post a picture of it here and I found these gorgeous like silver stilettos, they were very high heels that I was going to wear and it suited the outfit so well and I was like perfect, you know. And when it comes to shoes, I have a very, very, very long history of never thinking about my feet or how uncomfortable it's going to be before I buy my shoes. I'm just like, these are accurate. That's all I need. Let's go. So I'm like, pain is beauty. I'm going to, I'm going to wear them. So I started on my day. Everything's okay so far. I'm wearing my shoes. I got my friends around me. So, you know, making my way throughout the con and slowly but surely my feet start to hurt. Maybe about 45 minutes into the day, my feet start hurting. And I was 16 when I did this cosplay, so I wasn't really that used to wearing heels very often. Um, so that was another thing. So I was waiting in line to get my ticket, and I was like, wow, my feet are hurting already. This is a very bad sign. So, you know, I push through the pain. I try not to think about it, you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. And um, I last until roughly about 2, 3 p.m. of the con and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. My feet are screaming. I'm like literally like limping and hobbling around on the uh, around the con and like clutching on my friends for support. So like any smart person would, I just take off my shoes and decide I would rather walk around in my bare feet than wear these heels. It was already red flags were, were rising from that decision. So basically... At Anime North, there's the main conference building, which is where the main area of the con is, and then there's kind of like different, there's two other hotels very, very close by where like other activities and panels are being held. And we were walking to one of the hotels, was at, which was at the very, very end of kind of the convention ground. So it was probably like a 10 minute walk if that maybe but you know for us we're all hobbling around especially me so probably about a 10 minute walk so we're walking across this highway on the sidewalk and I decide I can't take this anymore I need to take off my shoes so I'm walking with my sh with my heels in hand and I'm like ah this is so much better until I stub my toe against the sidewalk my big toe and it was not like a ooh ow it was like a Okay, sorry if this makes any of you nauseous, but it was like a huge chunk of my skin had just peeled back from my big toe and it was just like starting to gush blood. And at first it didn't, it, I didn't feel anything. I was like, I'm fine. Like, let's keep going. My friends were like, Fiona, your toe is gushing blood all over the sidewalk. And I was like, Psh, it's fine. And then slowly the pain started to kick in and I was like, it's not fine. I'm gushing blood all over the sidewalk. And I was like, I need a band-aid or something. This is humiliating as well. I'm out in public, my toe is bleeding. And someone across the road was like, stalking, can I get your picture? And I was like, not right now, I'm sorry. My toe is bleeding. So, <laughs> My friends was like, hold on, I think I have something. So out of her bag, she whips out a pad. You heard me right, a pad. And I was like gushing blood all over the sidewalk, pad on my foot. Gushing blood all over the sidewalk, 
pad on my foot. Pad on my foot. So I'm like, you know what? My toe is literally exploding blood. That's good enough. So I open this pad and I start dabbing my toe with this pad. And you know, it, it, it is working. It's like a giant band-aid. So now I'm walking bare feet with a gushing, with a toe that's stopped bleeding a little bit now, but still very gross, disgusting, easily could get infected because I'm walking around with no shoes on. And there are these, we're, I'm walking to the hotel now because I need to get to like, um, oh, what's it called? I need, I need assistance for my toe. I need a band-aid. I need something. I need to go to the washroom. First of all, I need to wash this and make sure it's disinfected. And some people behind us, like I get it that I was really weird looking. Obviously I was this young girl with, um, walking around with no shoes on and my toe, but the people behind us, there's a huge group of them and they were really snobby and they were like, why is that girl walking with no shoes on? Like, put your shoes on. And I was like, I wanted to turn around to them and be like, do you, do you see this? My toe is gushing blood. I cannot put it back in my shoe. Because obviously as we entered the hotel, I couldn't just walk around with bloody feet, with bloody, with bloody feet. So I slipped my foot back into my shoes and I hobbled my way over to um, the washroom and washed it. It was all good, but um, fun fact to this day, I still have a blood stain on those shoes. Yeah, so that was my first thing that I did uh, stupid in cosplay. Number two, the second story on my list, which is not as stupid as the first story, but still kind of stupid, is so basically, I think it was two years ago, me and all my friends were cosplaying Love Live. We were cosplaying these outfits here, and they had knee-high or thigh-high socks. Now, especially I find because I'm tall, I have a very hard time having knee-high and thigh-high socks stay up without falling down because they're not as big as me, so I'm constantly, like, tugging them up. And I was like, I don't want that to happen throughout the con. I've dealt with that before, so I was like, you know what? At home, I have double-sided carpet tape. Let's use that instead. Not fashion tape which you're supposed to use on your skin, double-sided carpet tape that sticks to hardwood floors so that the carpet doesn't come up from the floor. Yeah, why is there just hair, no, there's string on me. So I sat there in the morning of the con and I wrapped my leg around once or twice with double-sided carpet tape. I stuck the sock on and I went out throughout the day. And not gonna lie, it actually really helped for a good few hours, but this convention, was in particular that year was so hot we got whooped with a heat wave so the sweat and the heat around the double-sided carpet tape created the worst heat rash ever when I got back to the hotel room it was so red and uncomfortable and even for the next few days I had like a permanent red band around my thigh from where the double-sided carpet tape was because it was just so hot and gross so yeah, don't use double-sided carpet tape. Please use fashion tape. Don't be like me. Never doing that again. But you know what? I think I did that again, actually. So number three, the third thing, the third story I can think of that I've done in cosplay, which is kind of stupid. And this one is a bit kind of like, I did not, nothing necessarily happened that was like life-threatening, but just the overall cosplay itself, I was like, why? So I think I was 15 at the time and I wanted to, I had been cosplaying now for two, three years and this was like my second time going to a convention with my friends. And you know, being 15, you're kind of still like a kid, but you're not quite an adult and you're kind of stuck in that in between where you're like, yeah, I'm a grown up, but you're not actually quite a grown up yet. So I was like, I'm gonna cosplay Black Rock Shooter. And if you guys don't know what she looks like, here's a picture of her here. She's in a bikini with her jacket open, short shorts. She's got a giant cannon. I commissioned this guy who lives in the States to make this cannon for me. It looked amazing. And little 15 Fiona, I'm very underaged, strutted around in this Black Rock Shooter cosplay throughout the con. And somehow my parents let me out of the house like that. And I just look back at that cosplay and I'm just like, why? Why did I do that? Like, that was so embarrassing. Like, People obviously, and they were like guys hitting on me, and obviously they didn't know how old I was, but it was, I felt very uncomfortable because I was like, wow, I know I'm 15 and they are clearly over the age of 20. I am very uncomfortable right now. And looking back on it now that I'm 20 and I have more of like a sound head and I am technically an adult, 
I feel like I did that cosplay because I wanted to be kind of more like sexy and like adult and like that's what all the other cool cosplayers were doing so I wanted to do it too and like I wanted to just push the boundaries and do something really different and I didn't even necessarily like the character that much. I mean, I, I really like Black Rock Shooter and I actually cosplayed another character from Black Rock Shooter I think the year after that and that was purely because I just liked the character and I made it all myself and it wasn't sexy and it was really great and amazing. I'll post a picture of that here actually because I worked my butt off for that cosplay but looking back at it now, I really should have waited until I was a little bit older to cosplay Black Rock Shooter. I know that if my kid came up to me and was like, look mommy, I want to do this, and she was 15, I'd be like, ha, you're funny. So now when I cosplay more sexy characters, I'm doing it purely because I want to and I like the character and I like the outfit. It's not because I feel like I need to kind of like force myself to do something different and look more kind of like adult and cool than I actually am on the inside because I'm a crying weenie. So yeah, that was just like a cringe moment. I was just like, Ugh, no, no. So number five, and this is, this is a very, I also told this story on my share channel, but it was a while ago. So many of you probably don't know, sorry, excuse me, or I'm going to refresh your mind. So this happened a good four years ago now. So I think I was like 16, maybe 17. And me and some of my friends were like, you know what, let's go to this new con. It was around Halloween time, so it was kind of like a Halloween convention. And um, I were like, we've never been before. I was like, let's go. And they were all like, cool, sounds great. So we embark that day to this convention. It's just one day in the evening. And... Um, it's summer we had never been before. It was definitely in Toronto somewhere, but you know, we had never been. So we, I Google mapped the directions and I printed them off because at this point, I don't think I had data on my phone or if I did, my parents didn't trust me with it. Um, so yeah. And we started, we started our way and we, you know, we took the subway there and everything. It was going smoothly. And then we had been walking for quite a long time. And I was like, you know, we were all starting to get a little bit like, oh, you know, it said 20 minutes on the map. Like, this is really weird. We've been walking for a really long time. Um, you know, it's very, it's dark out now or it's getting very dark out now and it's starting to rain. Like, I'm cold and we keep, I'm like, guys, it's got to be there soon. Like, let's, let's keep going. Don't stop now. We've already started. I'm not turning back. So, you know, we keep going. We keep going. And at this point, it's been like a good 45 minutes, almost an hour. And we should have been there by now, according to the map. So my friend took the map from me, looked at it and was like, Fiona, you printed out the drive directions instead of the walking directions. So <laughs> it took 20 minutes to get there by car. But by walking, it took about two and a half hours. So we were already almost an hour into this journey of life to this convention. These four 16 year old girls down in Toronto at night dressed up in maid cat costumes. Yeah, it was really weird. And walking just along the side of the road and our feet were hurting and we ended up taking our shoes off because our feet, or like some of us did because our feet hurt so much. We were just walking around outside in the rain with no shoes on in the dark for two and a half hours. Um, let's just say I got a lot of glares that night and I completely understand why because, <laughs> I mean, looking back on it now, it's a very humorous, funny um uh, accident but while it was happening I was definitely like oh boy this is this is not this is not a not a good idea so we did get there eventually the con ended up being actually pretty like poopy and we were kind of like wow we walked two and a half hours in the dark in the rain for this um great so we kind of wandered around for a bit and then went home and let's just say we've never been back to that con before i think whenever we think of that convention we always get a little bit like <laughs> like the memories um so we haven't been back yet and apparently it's kind of met anyway so whatever but yeah that was a fun story and that was all my fault notice how these things always happen when we're especially like between the ages of like 14 and 18 like just those years of our lives, man, we were all just like, especially me. Well, these are all things I've done, so I don't know why I'm saying we, but those years of my life, I clearly was not thinking properly, sometimes even now to this day. Sorry, my last story um, of stupid things I've done in cosplay, and this is an entire cosplay I've made that, yes, 
I think it personally went over really well visually, but was it practical? Very much so, no. So a few years ago when I was in this pop prop crazy phase, I just wanted to make props. You know, I wasn't I wasn't sewing at that point, so I was like, yeah, props, cool, fun times. And you know, I still like making props, but I'm definitely more of a sewing person now. So I was like, I am going to cosplay Black Rock Shooter. Or no, I'm going to cosplay Strength from Black Rock Shooter. And at this point I had made one prop, which was a chainsaw from Grell, a black, a cha girl's chainsaw from Black Rock, Sh no, Black Butler that a waitress kicked in a restaurant and kicked it in half. So yeah, it wasn't really the greatest. It wasn't that sturdy. And so I was like, I'm going to make those arms from strength. And my parents were like, yeah, okay, sweetie, have fun. Good luck. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. So, you know, my dad showed me how to use a jigsaw. Um, he <laughs> showed me how to use like a drill. Like I did everything myself and I ended up finishing the arms after many complications. They were done. So I had managed to construct these giant arms and not to toot my own horn, but I think they looked pretty damn amazing. I was super proud of myself because when I say I did them all by myself, I really said, I really mean that I did them all by myself. And I was so excited to wear them to the convention. So, you know, uh, that year I didn't have a hotel at the convention, which was a big mistake. So the day started, my dad dropped me and all of my friends off at the convention. He unloaded my giant arms. I'll post pictures before or here for you to get an idea. My giant arms, which were pretty much almost the size of me, out of the car. And he was like, you could see the look on his face. He was like, have fun. And it was super hot out. And so I started out throughout the day. Um, so basically with these arms is that it was basically like a wooden frame with the with insulation foam built around it. And inside the wooden frame, there was PVC and there was a handle um, screwed into the PVC for me to grab onto so I could walk around with these arms on my in my own on my own arms and I'm walking throughout the con with these arms and you know it's going good I'm getting a few pictures I'm feeling really proud of myself and but without fail my arms start to hurt a lot and one of the fingers starts falling off on my arms so my friend Aaron very graciously and lovely helped me go to the, um, what are they called? Like the cosplay aid fixing center at the convention. And she helped me, took time out of her day to help me glue my fingers back together. And again, I think my finger, to th the finger threatened to fall off at least several th more times throughout the day. It was just like, they looked really great. I think they were more photo shoot friendly than they were con friendly. It was definitely not something that I would take to a con again, unless I put wheels under them or something. I could just literally like wheel them around as I walk. But I didn't think of that, or maybe I did and I just didn't, who knows. The thing is, is like, I can't have my arms down with these when I walk because they would drag against the ground. They were that big. So when I walked, I had to pick my arms up like this and carry them. So I was using all these muscles here in my arms the entire time. And even at one point, there was a guy sitting in an ambulance, um, obviously working. And uh, he was like, are you okay? Do you need a ride anywhere? And I was like, no, it's okay, thank you. So I'm walking around with these huge arms. My arms are killing me. The fingers are falling off. And at the end of the day, I was carrying one and my friend was walking around with the other one on her head throughout the day. And it was just like, honestly, like, it was, it was pretty much hell. Like the first few hours, for the first like maybe two or three hours, it was great. And then things started falling apart. I was sweaty, they were heavy. I didn't know how to fix it. And I was just panicking and I had to have my friend carry one of them. It was just a hot mess. And I remember the, the next few days after that, my arms were so sore. Like I felt like I had just lifted weights for like 27, for like an entire day basically, which is pretty much what I was doing because these arms were super heavy each arm. So, note to self, yeah, it was just, it sounded great in my head. It looked great, but it wasn't convention friendly. And sometimes that really sucks. Anyways, so I hoped you learn, I hope some of you could learn from my mistakes. 
Um, and th those are some stupid things I've done in cosplay. We've all had our fair share of doing stupid things in cosplay, but maybe more so than others. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any other stories that you would like to share of your own stupid things that you've done in cosplay, leave them down in the description box below. Not description box. You can't hack into the description box. Leave them down into the comments below and I will feel better and maybe we can all have a good chuckle. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!